another power supply? How many do you freaking have? Yes, it's time for another power supply project. So I'm calling this my ultimate RD6006 power supply build. You can see it here. It's actually portable. It's got a couple battery packs on the back. Um, typical RD6006. I'll talk about it a bit in a moment. I do have lots of power supplies on the workbench. So I've got this one. The four pack of power supplies here. There's these two. It's another RD6006. There's a, a meanwhile powering everything. There's power supplies down there. There's a power supply here. Um, you end up with a lot of power supplies for various purposes. I built this one because I wanted to have a power supply over at my other desk, my computer desk, because I was doing a little bit of software development on a microcontroller and I wanted to be able to power it and to be able to current limit the power that was going into the circuit. So I figured uh, why not use another RD6006 for that. Uh, but I didn't really want to have to uh, deploy a ginormous um, 40 volt power brick to power it and run AC and all that. I just wanted something that was quick and easy. So I came up with this, and I came up with two different ways to power it. One that is portable, and one that is USB powered. So everything in this you can uh, get online. I didn't build anything custom, I didn't make any circuit boards, not my usual uh, stuff. I just uh, bought a lot of off-the-shelf components. And we'll see, uh, you've got your typical RD6006 power supply, you can get that off of AliExpress. It's a really nice power supply, I've reviewed it already as part of another project. Um, let me turn it on and off. It actually has Wi-Fi built into it. It's also got a USB connection. You've got your numeric pad. You've got dials to turn things. It, it's really cool. Um, I like the RD6006. One thing I don't like about it is this button that when you turn it off, it blinks on and off. It's also drawing about 140 milliamps while it's doing this blinking on and off, doing uh, nothing other than waiting uh, perhaps for Wi-Fi to tell it to turn itself back on. So I put an actual switch to cut the power to it. That way we can't drain the batteries, we won't have any blinking lights and noise. The other thing I like is my dual banana jack plug, like this one here. Um, unfortunately you can't plug it in here uh, because they suck this stupid green terminal in the middle, which is not actually ground, it's actually like a battery charging terminal. You really, for powering something you really want to go to the red and the black. So I wired in some banana jacks to the back, hooked to the back of these red and black posts so I can plug in my standard dual banana plugs. I do that on all my uh, RD6006 and other builds. Uh, so looking at the back of this thing, let's shut it off. Um, we've got the two DeWalt packs. They just clip right on there on the back. Um, and they give you portable power. These are 20 volts each. You put two of them in series, you got 40 volts. Uh, your RD6006, maybe it drops a volt or two from that, so you're good to like 38, 39 volts out of the RD6006. Uh, these two mounts are printed on Thingiverse. I will put up, um, I'll put up a link to the page where you can download those mounts. Those are really good. Um, the, uh, the metal contacts are actually just spade terminals that you kind of heat and push into place, and it gives you a great way to mount your battery packs. So there are three different ways to power uh, my ultimate power supply. One of them is the two battery packs. That gives you 40 volts at as many amps uh, as one of these can supply. These are two amp hour batteries, so they'll last a, a fairly long time running a low uh, load. But you can buy bigger DeWalt batteries. You can buy like uh, five amp hour ones and you put a couple of five amp hours on if you wanted to. So that way number one is the batteries. Uh, method number two is right here this uh, 2.1 by 5.5 jack. I tend to use that for a lot of projects that I power off of 12 volt or or other voltages. I use the smaller jack for my 5 volt projects, but for the higher voltage projects I use this jack. And you know, you could plug 48 volts into this uh, with like a, uh, a PoE transformer or something and just power power this off of 48 volts from an AC power brick. Uh, you could even plug up to 60 volts in, or you plug the big uh, Meanwell brick in, whatever you want. If you just want to power the supply direct from DC, you can use that. And then finally, I have put a USB-C connector in there. It's a little breakout board I got, I think, from Pololu. So you can take a USB-C, plug a USB-C into the back, turn it on. Turn that on too. 
And there, now we, um, we have it running off of USB-C. Um, now, it wouldn't be very useful USB-C if all you put into it was uh, 5 volts because then, you know, your maximum this thing could put out is 5 volts. So what I've done is I've hidden a little boost converter inside of it, and I'll crack open the case and show that in a moment. Uh, the boost converter is trimmed to around 14.5 volts. Right now it's putting out like 15.3 or something. It seems to fluctuate around a little bit. Um, but but the boost converter allows you to up convert the 5 volts from the USB-C into something a little higher which we can then down convert down to uh, 5 volts or you know we should be able to get like a, a good solid 12 you know for my Nixie 2 projects I can run off 12 volts even 13, 14 you know it's topping out like around 14.27 you know I wouldn't try to run it at the maximum I would kinda Oops. I would kind of bring it down to around 12 volts, you know, maybe 13.2 with this uh, boost converter. Um, as I think we will see, you will end up losing a lot of efficiency um, to doing a boost converter and then a, a buck converter down with this power supply. You're kind of losing switching efficiency both ways. But if you just want to run, be able to run this thing off of you know USB power pack or USB at your desk or whatever, this, this is great convenience. I can step it up and I can run one of my 12 volt Nixie tube projects, or I can run a Raspberry Pi at 5 volts with current limiting, or an Arduino with 5 volts, you know, and, and current limited. Um, I like the current limiting capabilities built into this supply. So let's take a look in the back. As I said, all of this came pretty much from off the shelf components. Stuff you can buy on eBay, AliExpress, Amazon, whatever. Didn't have to make anything custom. I did design the case myself, uh, minus the two uh, DeWalt brackets that I, I borrowed from someone else. So open the back panel up. This uh, all goes together with heat set thread inserts. I like those on my uh, 3D printed uh, cases. Open this up. You know, here's the RD6006. As I mentioned before, these two banana jacks are just soldered to the banana jacks in the back of the RD6006. I've got my switch. Um, the RD6006 has a temperature lead. It's just floating around in there. Um, just a standard RD6006 power supply. Um, and then as far as the magic that I added, like I said, all off-the-shelf components. This is the uh, boost converter that converts the 5 volt from the USB-C. Um, on up to uh, 14 point something, 15 point something, somewhere in that range. Um, this will actually do up to 40 volts or so, but it gets less and less efficient with the higher the step up. So you want to step up from 5 to 40, it's less efficient than you want to step up from 5 to 15. So I, I kept it kind of low. Um, these are just Wago um, lever lock wire nuts, convenient way to wire everything together. And then we've got a fuse here, just an automotive style fuse for the um, for the batteries. So these DeWalt batteries, you plug them in, there's quite a bit of energy in a lithium battery. I wouldn't want to short this thing out. I would imagine you could damage the battery um, or you could melt wires or something. So I did put a fuse on that DeWalt battery. And then down here we've got the barrel jack. Over here is the uh, little Pololu uh, USB-C breakout. Um, that's pretty much it. Like I said, all off-the-shelf stuff that you can just buy and stick in a case and make yourself a little power supply. Let's try out a few tests on this. So I've got uh, the RD6006 here with the two DeWalt batteries in back. We'll do the battery-operated test first. Have it hooked up to a KP184 DC load. Uh, this is currently set, the RD6006, to uh, 5 volts at 6.1 amps. It's got 40.83 volts going in. Let's, uh, where's this set? And on, let's turn this on. Uh, now we're pulling um, 0.1 amps, uh, 1 milliamp. That's weird, it says, uh, it says 0.2 over here. It's this thing like... Well, that was weird. That was like a bug in the uh, KP-184. Okay, now we've got the KP-184 at 0.1 amp. Approximately 0.1 amps here. 
Um, nothing surprising there. Let's ramp it on up. There's a couple amps, about 10 watts going through it. Let's bring it all the way up to 6 amps. Um, we are getting some voltage loss, probably in the cables. It's down to 4.7 volts that it's reading. Uh, this is about 28 watts. Certainly these two uh, DeWalt batteries are able to um, able to supply this thing at 5 volts at its, its full capability. Let's bring this down to about an amp. And let's start uh, really uh, raising the uh, voltage on up. I want to see if we can get like 38 volts out of this at full rated capability. So there's 38 volts uh, at 1 amp, that's 38 watts. Again, having no trouble with it. And let's go up to 3 amps. Um, now we've got 113 watts going through this thing. Um, it should be starting to get warm inside of here. This thing does have a fan on it that I would expect to kick on at some point. Let's go all the way up to 6 amps. Yeah, I do actually, I do actually hear a fan running in it now. Um, so yeah, we are delivering 6 amps, um, 220 watts through the power supply, approximately 220 watts over here on the uh, DC load. Turn it off, turns off, turn it on, turns on. this one here on off let's try a uh, power on test with the lead that worked fine uh, we haven't blown any fuses we haven't damaged our battery so two DeWalt's powering this seems to be working out pretty much fine okay now I've changed things up I am now powering it through the USB-C into the back of it. I've taken the two DeWalt batteries off. So on the USB-C I'm powering it from my other wall mounted RD6006 so we can get a good read on how much power is uh, going into the boost converter versus how much is coming out of the supply. Uh, so even right now not running anything um, we're using uh, 300 milliamps here is being supplied into that boost converter um, being boosted up to 14.9 uh, volts and powering the RD6006 down here. Uh, so let's turn on the output. We've still got the uh, KP184 set to 100 milliamps. Um, now we're up here, uh, we've got 600 milliamps going in um, and 100 milliamps ending up out there. So we can see there's a lot of waste here. Part of that waste is just due to the running power on this. Uh, we'll ramp it up a little bit more and see what happens. Okay, so let's try bringing it up and see what happens. 300, 400, 500, 600, 700. Wow, we are really pulling, we're really pulling a lot here. We're pulling 10 watts there and only 3.48 watts are coming out down here. I have this set here to current limit at uh, 2.4 amps, so if we hit the 2.4 amp um, current limit, it's going to cut the output voltage. I think it's already doing that. Uh, so unfortunately, all we really got usable out of a 2.4 amp supply, which is kind of simulating, uh, you know, typical USB, old style USB 2.4 amp uh, wall wart. All we really got usable out of that is about 700 uh, milliamps. And our efficiency, got 10 watts coming out, 3.5 watts coming in. Uh, so we're like 30% uh, efficient. That's, that's terrible. So I am wondering a little bit about this uh, boost converter strategy. Let's see what happens at 12 volt. I'm going to bring this on down. Uh, let's go down here into VSET. Uh, 
Now we've got 12 volts being output here. Okay, let's bring it up 100 milliamps, no problem. 200, 300, we're up to about 2.2 amps going in. About 10 watts, again, 3.5 watts coming out. Um, so we've got about 300 milliamps useful at 12 volts. If we try to go to 400 milliamps, um, what we will see is we ended up causing this to current limit because I had this limited to 2.4 amps. Um, and then everything just kind of went to hell here. Now one thing I've noticed if the boost converter, if you tend to overtax it, that you, you've caused your input voltage to drop and you've caused it to saturate, it'll just sit here saturating. So it's still pulling the 2.4 amps, um, even though we're getting almost no power out of it. And it'll keep doing that until we bring our load way down. So I mean, we've got to hit our load almost to zero and then we can go back up. To 300 milliamps. So that boost converter, it, it, when you when you run it near its limit, it gets kind of kind of bad. So that is disappointing. I expected it to perform better than that. Back when I was trying it out uh, the other day, I thought I was getting like 75% uh, efficiency. Now we're down to. Okay, so I wanted to spend some time investigating why the supply isn't performing as well as I thought it did. Um, the when I first built this and I hooked the USB-C uh, up to the boost converter and I tried this out before I shot the videos I was getting like 80 percent efficiency now I'm getting closer to 30 percent efficiency so I'm wondering you know what happened um, and I think I may have an idea what I've done is I've added some additional capacitance this is a 220 microfarad capacitor and um, the voltage coming out of the boost converter is no longer jumping around. We've got a steady 14.65 into the RD6006. That's, you know, off the 5 volt uh, USB-C. If I remove the capacitance, then look, now we're down to 12 volts. Um, and the wattage going into it has gone way up. So I think, and the efficiency's gone down. So I think what's happened. I think a capacitor blew on that boost converter. I'm going to pop it open and take a look, see I add the capacitor back in. More power. So um, I bet if I put a scope on this I would see that this uh, voltage coming out of that boost converter is just all over the place. Let me take a quick look at the inside of this. So this has two capacitors on this boost converter. The input is a 470 microfarad 35 volt. The output is a 330 microfarad uh, 50 volt. I am wondering if uh, maybe there's a problem with this output capacitor. We did put about 41 volts to it with the DeWalt. And I'm wondering if maybe the rating on this capacitor is exaggerated. Um, even if it isn't, uh, you know, 41 volts with a 50 volt uh, rating, that's not a whole lot of um, wiggle room on that. Usually you want to overrate a little bit. Um, so I wonder if I need to put a bigger capacitor in there. Something with a higher voltage rating. Maybe I should desolder this cap, try it out, uh, see if the cap has become damaged. Um, and then maybe I'll get my boost converter efficiency to come back up. Thirds efficiency. Anyway, that is it for this video. So this is what I consider to be the ultimate RD6006 power supply build. Um, trying to come up with a strategy here where I could power it off of 5 volts but not being entirely successful um, with that. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.